Yeah, this is going over the um, two carburetors actually. This is um, this one here is your Toyota carburetor. It's off the '78 Toyota. It's a this is a remanufactured, remanufactured in the United States. It's the part number is TOY 250 from National Carburetors. And uh, this is my old uh, Hitachi carburetor off the uh, Suzuki Samurai. Or I actually have an SJ413. Now, um, both of them I have the throttle linkage on this side, so I'm showing them the same way. Throttle linkage on this side, throttle linkage on this side. And um, this Hitachi carburetor, ACIN, or whatever the hell it is, I ain't really sure. This is a 26 mil, this is the one that's on a stock Samurai. This is 26 millimeter primary and a 30 millimeter primary. And on a Toyota carburetor, it's a 28 and a 28. So you got a 26 and a, tw and a 30 and a 28 and a 28. The uh, bolt pattern is the same. So it bolts up. Now this is the spacer plate that goes on the Samurai. Um, now I just want to point out, this is the side that sits towards the manifold right here. Okay. This is the side that sits to the manifold. And it goes up on here like that, you know. In other words, uh, if you see how I have it on the carburetor, it sits like that way. So this groove has to be filled in. You got to clean it out real good. And I'm going to use some um, JB Weld. I'm not even going to use the two-part mixture, just the one part. Now, on this side, you have to blend it to go from... It's not really totally essential. Actually, you can make this whole thing 28 millimeters in um, the spacer plate and the manifold but you should take the manifold off but you can blend this to spacer plate where it goes from 20 this 26 millimeter hole to 28 okay so in other words this 28 hole on the uh, carburetor lines up with the plate exactly to 28 and then it kind of goes into 26 on the manifold and you can make the whole thing 28 but that's not really necessary and the only other thing you got to do is cut a little notch right here because this little notch basically is right here right here and it's not totally necessary in other words see the back of that notch right there would sit right over here you'd cut on the back right here so it goes to this um, vacuum line but that vacuum line is closed anyway so it's not really 100% necessary so these are the modifications you got to do simple modifications to bolt up otherwise and um, on the air cleaner you got to put a couple little dents on the bottom of the air cleaner to make it sit on top of the uh, um, Toyota carb because up here you'll have this will hit and this will hit so I put a little dent up here and a little dent there indented it now, the other thing is, I can't use the, uh, you just got to find another bolt for this. Um, actually, this won't screw into that carburetor because um, the top part will. Actually, if you reversed it, it would, you know. But uh, I'm going to get a, um, a bolt and uh, basically um thread it in there and uh, use some loctite and use this spacer and that'll be for the i can use a stock air cleaner so um that's basically the whole setup right there in a nutshell so this should go in there pretty easy and uh just have to make the bracket there's a couple things that are gonna have to come off of this like a couple of these uh vacuum units but um i think one of them comes off but um i'll go over that in the video as i'm progressing but first step is I'm going to have to fill in this channel here. And then also on the opposite side, I'm going to have to make that into a 28 and blend it. So it goes, it flows from 28 to 26. And you can make a 28 all the way through, but then you'd have to take the manifold off. I'm not going to do that. And cut this little channel so that one vacuum port works. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so this is the spacer plate. Um... I cut the little channel here, which uh, goes from, let's see, right here, 
channel cuts in right here. In other words, the channel goes from here to this vacuum port from the primary, like when it's sitting this way. You see it like that. Okay, so it sits that way. It goes over there. Then um, you can see I blended this. This is 28 millimeter. So it goes 28 millimeter, and when it goes to the manifold, it's going to go to 26. Okay. Now you can make the whole thing 28 all the way through, but then you have to take the manifold off because, well, you should to make sure you don't get any shavings in there unless you're really careful, but it's not necessary. So, um, and then there's a hole that goes through this side. That's from this channel. And I filled in this whole channel. And um, basically I'm going to sand this smooth when it uh, dries. What I used was... Uh, JB Weld steel stick. You could also use JB Weld, the standard stuff, you know, the white and the black. I just use this. It's just like you knead it together. It's epoxy putty. It's the same time, same kind of junk. Um, both very strong. It doesn't need to be incredibly strong because this is going to be sandwiched between two gaskets. So that's the deal. Anyway, so uh, that's that step. And uh, just got to wait for it to dry. Okay, after the um, JB Weld dries, I take a flat file. Now, a file is completely flat. You don't want to use a uh, piece of sandpaper. And um, as I go over it in different directions, the file in different directions, and uh, you get all the corrosion off the metal. Now, this side had a little bit of the hole filled, but this is the side with the groove filled. So it's perfectly flat all the way across here. So the whole thing is perfectly flat. It's like... Um, I took it to a machine shop and I got it down to like, you know, a half a thousandth or something like that. So when this um, spacer sits on there, and remember, this side here goes to the manifold. That's to the manifold. And here's this side towards the carburetor. And this is the first primary. This is going to be, it's blended from 28 millimeter to 26 millimeter. And again, you can make the whole thing 28 millimeter all the way through. It's not really necessary, but you know, if you're going to do that, you should take the manifold off to make sure you don't get metal shavings in there unless you really stuff a lot of rags down there or something like that and use a vacuum cleaner. Be very careful, but I'm not going to do that. This is actually sufficient. So now this thing's perfect. This thing's ready to install. And uh, like I said, don't use a piece of sandpaper to knock this down. Use a flat file and go in different directions. This way, that way, this way, this way. This way, you know, it's it's um, there's no grooves cut into it. Just do it a little bit at a time and uh, just get it perfectly flat. Yeah, this was a big question. A lot of people were asking about this carburetor. Like this was um, TOI 250. This is on the 1188cc or 1200cc 78 Toyota Corolla carburetor. But you can adapt it for the Suzuki Samurai, you know, 85 or 86 through... Uh, 96 I think the last year was made a lot of people were asking you know how the hell do I find um, something that can go in here in the inlet and you know they were getting adapters and they're using pipe threads and all you know they're using threads and stuff and I says you know something's got to fit in there well here it is it's 12 millimeter and it's one millimeter threads it's extra fine now, you're not familiar with metric, you got 1.75 is coarse, 1.5 millimeters is fine. Then I got 1.25, which is extra fine. Well, this is 1.0. This is like super fine. This is brake line. So what you do is you find some brake line with 12 millimeter, 1.0. Here's a, here's a part number. Now, this side has one and a half, mil, like a regular fine thread this is like a super fine thread on this side what you can do you know and you use this as your fuel line you could take the Dremel tool cut this off just by cutting across in here and you have a nice flared edge to put your um, hose over so if you look down in here in the carburetor you can see that's a flanged hole just like on a brake line and that's why I figured it was this would be the right part so this screws in here perfect so it's the exact right part you can get this part from a lot of parts stores it's about 
three or four dollars that's all it is you just get a one foot length of brake line it's got to be extra extra fine you're not going to find a uh, a pipe fitting that's one o uh fine thread that is like a super fine thread again i repeat there's like 1.75 millimeter thread that's coarse 1.5 is fine 1.25 is extra fine and 1.0 is like super fine threads that's what's used in this this is the brake line so here's the part number i used on the one side is 1.5 you can cut this off this way and you can use this as your fuel line now i currently have this weber on here it's a um rgm it's like a rare weber that's supposed to be really good but i think it's screwed up from the bad gas but just want to point out you want to use a regulator with this and you see how if it's I don't want the light shining here. That's pretty good. You can see where this is. It's set on two and a half pounds, and you got the direction of the fuel fuel flow. So you can you press it in, you turn it. That's three pounds. That's three and a half pounds, four pounds. You can you can bring it down to like three or two and a half. That's a well maybe three, which a little lower pressure maybe two and a half might be sufficient. So if you're going off road and if you have the float on this side facing the firewall that's gonna give you a lot more um, less susceptibility to flooding when you're going up really steep hills especially when it combined with this regulator now I'm probably gonna make this a two-part video series because uh, I don't know if I'm gonna install this carburetor immediately I just want to put this information out first because I think there was some questions about you know how to get this carb installed and I think those are the main stumbling blocks um, one was that adapter thing it's a brake line so that was simple and I think I'm the only one that saw that because <laughs> I looked all over the internet nobody saw, nobody said that uh, I just kind of figured what it was yeah, and just to give a little more attention to detail this is the uh, Toyota carburetor this is the original Samurai carburetor and so like you have a little um, stud on here you put the air cleaner on it and it has like a sleeve so the air cleaner doesn't go down that, that far um, I made something exactly like the original the exact same height as this stud this stud is not interchangeable with this okay it's a bigger hole on the bottom it's a six um, there's the size right there it's a m6 one uh, one millimeter fine thread and um, I used um, one inch I think it's uh, here it is yeah quarter quarter inch inside diameter one inch sleeves and I cut a hair off of it you can see that I cut just a little bit off it to make it the exact height of the air cleaner with the nut I used a nylon nut so basically when you're looking at this this you know you take this off there's a nylon nut and it's screwed into here tightly so the stud stays in nice and tight so when you take off the wing nut on the air cleaner the stud doesn't come out so this is the exact right height right here as the original so little attention to detail some people would just stick a screw in there and say to hell with it I don't do shit like that I do things nitpicky <laughs>